I'm Edie Lush, and I'm here at the Hub Culture Studio, our brand new studio. What do you reckon, Justin? Do you like it? I love the new studio, Edie. Thank you, Justin. So you are Global Director of Executive Positioning at Edelman. We've been talking for as long as I've been coming to Davos, which is nine years. Well, how many Davos is this for you? It's 16, Edie, which okay. is a pretty dubious honor. So tell me, how has it changed this year? What do you reckon? Yeah, it's one of the most common questions is how has Davos changed? So part of this is understanding that Davos itself is really the World Economic Forum meeting that occurs in the Congress Center in the middle of town. The World Economic Forum puts on exceptional program in the Congress Center and it's side events that the forum organizes. The biggest change is outside of that. You have all of these brands that have done activations outside of the Congress Center. Mm. So when I first came here, you wouldn't really see logos on the promenade, promenade mm -hmm. outside the Congress Center. Mm. Now it looks like a NASCAR. Right. Everywhere you go, it's logo, logo, logo. Yeah. And walking down the promenade is amazing because it's kind of a reflection of whatever the themes of are the yeah. of the year. So this year when I walk down, it's like crypto, 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 blockchain, 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 and then women, women, women. And then of course there's normal businesses. But how is that? Have you experienced any of that? Yeah, so when we advise our clients on doing any outside activation at Davos, it's only worth it if you've got something to say. Right. It's not worth it to just plaster your logo. So if you're a company that, for example, women in leadership is essential and something that you're living by mm. and something you want to advocate for, doing some programming around that makes a lot of sense. Do you feel like the Me Too has reached a Me Too 2.0 here? Have we moved anywhere on from the incredible splashes that we've seen in all the newspapers? I think what's incredible is that the forum had a panel on Me Too. Mm. I mean, that is A, showing that the forum is being very attuned to important social issues that cross into business mm. and that they're willing to take on a controversial issue as well. So. I actually think the fact that Me Too made it to Davos mm. is a great signal as well. Now you advise a lot of CEOs. What, what have you noticed in the life of a CEO? How active activists are they? Yeah, so you're aware of the Edelman Trust Barometer. Yeah. And one of the findings that we had this year is that trust in CEOs is on the rise. Mm. One of the reasons we think that is, is CEOs are beginning to selectively speak out. So it's definitely now this buzz phrase, the activist CEO. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to be an activist CEO around the issues that matter. When they tie to the values of the company, when they tie mm -hmm. to things that your employees are passionate about, mm -hmm. doesn't mean speak out about everything, but speak out about the things that are important to you as a company, your values, and what matters to your employees. I'm fascinated by the trust barometer, and I've been following it since you guys have introduced it to me. What, what's interesting for me is looking at it just from the point of, for say, the sustainable development goals. You can't have, we can't achieve the world we want to by 2030 if we don't have cooperation. We can't have cooperation without trust. Yet what the barometer showed this year was that there are a lot of areas trust is falling. Trust in social media is falling. Trust in people like us uh, or people that, that are, I feel are like me is falling. So how do you square all of that up. In some ways, there's something heartening about the trust barometer because look what, what rose. Trust in traditional media mm. and great reporting. Mm. Trust in experts, trust in academics. Mm -hmm. These are people who speak the truth mm. and who are trusted sources of the truth. Which is kind of a good thing. It's a really good thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else are you, what are you, well, we're yet to see Trump speak, but what's been the kind of, I don't know, the, the mood, the kind of gossip behind the scene? Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about the mood here is I think there's been a lot of angst amongst the executives coming to Davos over the last many years. Mm. First, there's the angst from the economic crisis. Mm -hmm. Then there's the angst of growth being slow and how do we get out of the crisis? Mm -hmm. And sure, global growth isn't super hot right now, but it's certainly improved there seems to be less angst all around the kind of halls of Davos mm. right now, but it's not a return to swagger. You're right. not seeing these like giant, like we're gonna have the most expensive champagne yeah. kind of things, or we're mm. gonna be incredibly ostentatious. So I think there's a little more comfort with a little less angst. 
I heard an amazing um, comment from Kevin Delaney, uh, the editor of Quartz, last night, who said, I think the buzz of, of Davos is that AI and climate change are going to kill us all, but don't worry, because uh, women in the blockchain are going to save us. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a great line. And the other comment I heard from a CEO is just don't look down. Well, I think this was also one of those years where you actually have to literally look down mm. because the snow was so <laughs> terrible and yeah. I slipped, I think, four times you the did. first day. So I would say look down. <laughs> Justin, thank you very much for popping into the Hub Culture Studio and for your support in all of these years. Great. Thank you, Edie. And I'm Edie Lush.